tech rabbit here. So we'll have a little bit more detailed look at the um, new welding mask that I got. Um, one of my previous videos we unboxed the welding um, machine and then it came with this very simple welding helmet. can't really call it a helmet, a uh, visor. <laughs> and um, this is pretty pr uh, primitive. I mean, you have to hold it with one hand while you're welding. And um, it's got a permanently dimmed um, uh, glass plate. And then the actual area here isn't that big. And um, it doesn't really give you that much protection over your uh, face. And well, basically, it's the head because you know you have to, it's difficult to hold it very close so that you can. Um, get the full protection from this from all the sparks that are flying around so anyway i thought i'd upgrade a bit so the next step up is to actually move into, into one of these bigger helmets so let's see what we have So anyway, this is like the um, first step up to a, a real welding helmet. I don't consider a real welding helmet. There's many different types available. But, um, this here you can put directly on your head, and then it has actually quite good um, uh, side protection and um, relatively relatively good protection for your head. So when the sparks fly up and over then they don't actually land so much on your head and um, this has got um, electronic dimming of the display so it has an actual LCD display and then you can set it for um, different uh, sensitivities and um, so this means that actually you can um, you can actually see see your workplace, workpiece, and set up before you actually start. And then when you start welding, then this helmet will automatically dim the um, the display here, so that you can you can actually see the welding and while it continues. So a definite step up from um, the original concept. So let's have a look at the um, head strap first. So. This is to um, tighten it and loosen it around your head and then depending on how stiff you want it coming up and down and you can adjust it in the knobs and then the trick is that how much you want it to drop drop down what's the limit is that there's a probably hard to see there's a catch here that you have to move so it's got like five one two three four it's got five positions so then you can actually tune it to um, to your individual taste. And then um, before you use it, you should remove this um, protective film here. Get rid of that. And then there's another another film in here that needs to be removed. Anyway, in my case, this um, user manual this not really totally matching the helmet when I mean, you're looking at the, the breakdown of the parts. It's, um, yeah, the pictures are slightly different. Now, most of the, uh, the, the whole button uh, adjustment layout's not the same. And I think the sensor has been integrated into the actual unit and not like here where it seems to be separate. So that's it. Oh, probably not a serious problem, but still. Anyways, to access the batteries, then you need to just to slide the cover off. It was a bit tricky to do, but once you slide the cover off, then you can extract the batteries. And in my case, the batteries that were in there look very, 
They, they look a bit sad, I don't know. I'm going to actually measure and see if these these are okay, but they feel also incredibly light. But they look crap, so I don't think I'm going to use these. I'm going to change them out to new ones. So, I changed out the batteries, and now um, you have a, a low battery indicator lead in there, and then there's a test button, so when you press the test button, then it, um, it actually does um, blacken the display. That's quite good. So now I think it's in initial operating condition. So, a few words about the controls. The, um, Forest rotation is for sensitivity and you actually have a position for grind also, so if you're going to use this helmet while you're grinding and you don't want it to activate the um, dimming effect, then um, you can set it into the position of grind, or otherwise you can just um, yeah, adjust it according to... The, I suppose the, the, there wasn't really any distinct instructions of exactly what setting you should put it on, so I suppose you have to um, set that based on... Um, on experience in the work. Um, then we have the um, delay, which is that one, and that means that you can probably you can delay how how um, fast it actually activates the dimming. And then we have um, LED, which is the lighting of the work uh, workpiece while uh, when you finish the welding. And then, then there is um, a combination of shade and then darkness mode, and they are basically there, set up in a table in, in the user manual, based on what welding and um, what amperage you're running. So when you get those, you get the best setting from here. So as I understood it. Um, There are two shading levels, 9 to 13, or uh, 5 to 8. Doesn't completely match that, but I'm, I'm assuming the, um, the grade area is what you should actually put the shade to, and then um, based on the amperage rating you should then set the um, dimming effect. So I think that um, pretty much covers the basics. Feels right, relatively solid. We'll see how it, it works when we're actually constructing stuff. So anyway, if you thought this um, video was informative, consider subscribing, hit the like button. Um, if you thought it was worth it. Um, if you'd like to support the channel and acquiring more equipment and stuff, um, the um, links are in the description. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee or buy some merch. And um, yeah, join me in some of the fabrication videos that will be coming out. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.